Hey there, I'm Robert from the Rive Creative Team and welcome back for another video on the basics of UI. In this video, we're gonna have a quick conversation about text and how we need to set up text and think about it uh, in cases where we want to have that text be dynamic or change at runtime. I'll be linking a few helpful videos down in the description for a little bit more information about text if you're interested in that. Otherwise, let's get into the video. Now, instead of focusing on animation or state machines, uh, or menu creation or anything like that. I really just wanna talk about text. And there's two points that I wanna make on text. Um, and I've got a, a couple examples to show, uh, but let's say that you're building out a HUD. We built out this HUD for a demo game called Lyra. If you're familiar with Unreal, it's one of their um, demo projects. And we ended up updating most of the UI in there. And we needed to build a HUD. And this HUD has a number of different text objects that we want to be able to update at runtime. So for example, we've got this scoreboard up on the top of the HUD, and there are a couple uh, text boxes up here that we want to be dynamic. So the first one is this timer. Let me just go down here and find this. So here's our timer. Now you're going to note two things about this. One, that I renamed the text object and I renamed the text run. Now, if you want to have a text box that is um, findable at runtime, or they can, the engineers can find it in uh, the file and actually tie this to some kind of information like a timing system, um, what you're going to want to do is rename that. So in this case, I've renamed this timer so that they can uh, find this text box or the text object and actually tie it to code and create, you know, maybe a 15 minute timer or a 10 minute timer or whatever it is that they want to put in there. Now, the same is true for the uh, amount of points. So that's been, the text um, object has been renamed. This isn't really as important. This isn't an important for runtime, the text object, but the text run is. So this text run has to be renamed for it to be seen at runtime, but the uh, text object, you don't have to rename it, but this is more of just an organizational thing. Now that's the first point that I wanna make is that if you want to update the text at runtime, you have to rename the text run. The other thing that you need to know about text that you want to be dynamic is that it can't be included with a nested artboard. So in this case, I have a weapon component that I created so that I could build out a weapon select system. And normally what I would do is build out the whole component um, or build out one piece of the component and then build a more complex component uh, where I nest three of these and create some animations. But because I wanted to include text that is updatable, uh, which we're going to tie to ammo. What I did was I took this component, I put it on my HUD artboard because this is the artboard that's going to get exported and then uh, built the component here in the state machine. So now we've got a weapon select system that you can have one of three active slots and each one of those slots can be one of three different weapons. And then I included the text object here on the top level and then just incorporated the different animations that I needed. So the different colors for the text and things like that here on the main artboard level. And once again, you'll note that each one of these different um, weapon uh, text objects has been renamed as well as their text run. Because remember, it's the text run that is gonna be queried for at runtime and not the text object itself. Um, so this is for organization and this is to expose it at runtime. Now, the previous two things were really the main points that I wanted to get across. I just want to show you one more example of how to set something up uh, for runtime. So in this case, we wanted to create a scoreboard for both um, that shows both the red and blue team score. And this right here is just a demo of it, um, of you know how it should actually look at runtime. And this was sent over to the devs so that they could see how all this uh, should look. Um, but really how we had to deliver this is in two separate artboards. So on the first artboard uh, is your scoreboard. Now, something to note here is that because we're not changing player name, eliminations, assist, captures, ping, that's always going to stay the same. We don't have to rename the text run. Now, if you wanted to uh, localize this, um, this uh, scoreboard, then again, you'd go in here and you'd rename this player, uh, player name. So now the player name could be seen at runtime, eliminations, 
and so on and so forth, all the way through to the end. Same thing with team. Um, the thing that is dynamic in here is this uh, score right here. So you can see that this red team score is renamed. Um, so this text box can be updated at runtime. Now, the player card itself, you'll see that once again, everything in here, um, the things that we're going to be changing have been renamed. So player name's been renamed, kills has been renamed, assists has been renamed, captures has been renamed, and so is ping. And then we can take both of these artboards and send it over with this reference and just say, hey, you know, this is going to be the background. And then these red cards are going to sit in there. And, um, you know, we just want them to sort themselves in ascending order. So this was another example of a use case where um, we're going to want to update those uh, text blocks at runtime. So um, the things that we want to update, we make sure that they're on a top level artboard like this. Um, and they also are, um, those text runs are renamed. I know this was a short video. I hope you got something out of it. If you liked it, leave us a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave us a comment and we'll see you in the next one.